Welcome to the Black Hole Wool Scour. This historic wool scour stands as a monument to the sheep raising, wool growing and shearing industries and their importance to the history of the Black Hole region. Stories intrinsic to the Australian wool industry are connected to Black Hole. One such story is the famous blade shearing record of Jack Howe, achieved in a shearing shed not far from here. Another story is Black Hole's role in the formation of the Australian Labor Party. There are also stories of the many people who've contributed to the wool industry in Black Hole. From the men who drove the first sheep into the area in 1861, to the untold stories of the workers who helped build and operate this wool scour. Before the guide takes you on a tour, I thought I'd tell you about the importance of wool and how it has shaped our country. Come with us on a journey through the facts, figures and faces that make up the Australian wool industry and experience the golden age of wool. The Golden Age was an era when Australia rode on the sheep's back. Exports and wool prices were high, pastoralists prospered and the nation enjoyed a sustained period of wealth. Wool has driven Australia's economy throughout world events such as the Great Depression and in times of great prosperity such as the wool boom of the early 1950s. The Golden Age didn't arrive without hardship. Wool growers fought drought, fires, floods and an unpredictable overseas market. Some made great fortunes while others lost everything. The story of the rise of the Australian wool industry to world leadership is one of vision, courage, resourcefulness, occasional strife and often triumph over appalling difficulties. It was a drama in which many Australians played many parts. The first sheep arrived with the first fleet in 1788. Governor Philip had obtained them from the Cape of Good Hope. These were meat sheep, but early pioneers of the wool industry, such as John MacArthur, experimented with crossbreeding to produce much sought after wool. Fortunately, Australia's climate was ideal for the production of a high class of wool. And in the 1820s, merino sheep were imported from Saxony, France and England to form the basis of the wool industry. Within 50 years of settlement, sheep had moved into every colony and the annual wool clip was over 2 million kilograms. Wool had become Australia's main export. This was the dawning of the golden age of wool. The year 1822 may be regarded as decisive in the history of Australian wool. In that year, the English government reduced duties on colonial wool, which sparked a relentless trade war between Australians and Germans for supremacy in the English and world wool markets. Gradually, with Australian wool continuing to dominate the principal consuming centres, representatives from Britain and Europe and later from the United States and Japan came to attend the local sales. At the end of the 1800s, Australia was emerging from the impact of two major depressions and was in the grip of a severe drought. Despite this, Australian agriculture continued to develop and while wool and wheat dominated the agricultural scene, primary production was already characterised by great diversity with meat and dairy cattle, sugar cane and a wide range of horticultural crops grown. From the wool industry's early days, gritty, greasy wool presented problems for pastoralists. The dirt and oil added weight to the wool, making it more expensive to transport. Significantly, at the markets, washed wool attracted higher prices. Wool washing, or scouring, was an unpopular job involving washing the wool after it was shorn in hot water and detergent. As pastoralists moved away from large water sources, scouring became even more difficult. Initially, manual methods were used, 
But in the late 19th century, Australia's wool industry stood on the brink of radical transformation. Across the globe, an industrial revolution was brewing. The development of steam technology brought vast changes to many industries, including wool. When this revolution and the Australian wool industry collided, the result meant an even larger output of product. The introduction of mechanical shearing saw a great increase in wool being shorn and led to a need for a sophisticated facility to shear, house and wash the wool. Wool scours in regional centres such as Blackhall were built to scour the large output of fleeces. Blackhall Wool Scours founders, led by Chairman J. H. Hart, were entrepreneurs of their era, providing the town and region with its most significant and important secondary industry. They expressed the great optimism that existed in Blackhall after the debilitating Federation drought ended. The founders realised the potential of the combination of the new railway branch being built from Jericho to Blackhall, along with the ability to tap abundant water from the Great Artesian Basin. Also, there was plentiful timber close to the chosen site to feed the boilers. After the Blackhall wool scour opened, sheep from many local properties were walked to the Blackhall wool scour to be shorn. A new century began while the country was still in the grip of a great drought between 1895 and 1903. This was one of the most widespread droughts in Australia's history and halved the sheep population. Wool prices fluctuated until the outbreak of World War I, after which they improved largely due to the purchase by the British government of all the wool and demand for woolen service uniforms. The official yearbook of the Commonwealth of Australia in 1911 stated the chief contributing factor to the pastoral wealth of Australia is the production of wool. The output for the year 1909 being about 28 million pounds. Wool, both scoured and greasy, continued to be a valuable commodity after World War I with most production exported. By the mid-1920s, the United Kingdom, which had an established and expanding textile industry, purchasing about 50% of total wool exports. In 1924, wool exports accounted for 78% of all pastoral export income. By the 1930s, wool represented over 62% of total exported primary products. Australia's fine wool was in great demand worldwide. As a result of the Depression, the unemployment rate rose to a high of 30% in 1931-32. Large numbers of families moved from the city to the country. They worked as unpaid labourers in return for shelter and to catch their own food. The Black Hole Wool Scour was one of the only scouring operations to remain open at the time, attracting many men and their families looking for work. In spite of the difficulties maintaining trade during both the war and depression, the number of Australian exports increased significantly. The outbreak of World War II in September 1939 presented a challenge for the industry and had a detrimental effect on Australian agricultural trade. Farmers became isolated from world markets and restrictions were placed on the use of superphosphates and other supplies. Labour was also seriously affected. During the war years, much of the farm and factory labour fell to women. The Australian economy recovered quickly after the war, with the help of the wool industry. During the early 1950s, Australia was truly riding on the sheep's back. Prosperity in the wool industry peaked at this time. One pound of wool fetched one pound sterling. This short-lived increase in price was due to the American demand for wool, which was generated by the Korean War. This high price meant that graziers did not need to scour their wool. 
so the use of the remaining scours declined. Also, new scouring technology was being introduced and mills in other countries preferred to scour the wool themselves. Unfortunately, weather and world markets govern prosperity. Drought in the 1960s and again in the 1970s saw the lowest wool prices for many years and saw the exodus of black hole population. Demand for wool has usually been driven by markets and worldwide trends in fashion. To minimise the effect of short-term cycles, aid to the income of wool growers has been in place for many years. In the 1970s, the wool industry ran into hard times. The government had to support the industry with economic aids. It was during this time that the golden age of wool drew to an end and the Black Hole Wool Scour closed in 1978. When the Wool Scour opened in 1908, the community gathered to celebrate this new industry and the opening of the rail. A beacon of history, the Black Hole Wool Scour is a doorway to times past. The building is rich in history, representing prosperity and hardship, toil and gain. The Black Hole Wool Scour is now a heritage listed cultural tourism venue that belongs to the community. The impact of Australia's golden age is evident throughout the Wool Scour through the stories told by the guides. Hard times are often forgotten, good times are easily remembered, but through it all, the Wool Scour remains a silent witness to the golden age. It's time to take a look at the Scour with one of our guides. This building comes alive with stories and memories that stretch back for almost a century. So take the time to savour this slice of Australian history. I know you'll find it a memorable experience.